Hey everyone, welcome to this interview with Lee Bellinger, Chris Mason here, and uh, Lee, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, what an amazing, uh, I was up late last night, uh, the, the Trump election, mm -hmm. and uh in quite a moment, quite a moment for me and for the country and for a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of big deal. A lot of things were validated in this election that, that uh, many people, a surprising number of observers have been saying, I know um, the media are all saying, gosh, how did we miss this? And uh, how did we not see this coming? And why weren't we paying attention to uh, what the anguish of the American people were, was and the middle class? And, uh, and I, you know, they're, they're kind of just, uh, they're just kind of, I, I think right now the establishment's in a state of shock. I uh, don't yeah. think it's going to last long. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last long. They've been running the show for a very, very long time, uh, you know, going back further than a century. But I mean, basically since the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, uh, you have a very deep state of, of uh, players and uh, you sometimes have an anomaly like a Reagan, but uh, for the most part, uh, it is uh, it, an unbroken march to oppression uh, you know, one degree at a time. And uh, you, you have Obama has really been grooming the country for dictatorship. And this is a setback for that. And so that's a good thing. But uh, there's much to be concerned about because the left is so much stronger and better organized than ever before. And, uh, you know, millions of people voted for Bernie Sanders. And like Amer Independent Living has predicted many times, if Trump wins, uh, there would be violence. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think we need to worry about massive violence immediately because, like I said, they're in shock right now. They're going to go back. But there were um, on the West Coast in a couple of cities, cars burned, flags burned, uh, and, de and death threats against the president-elect already. But uh, they're going to put their heads together over the next few weeks, and you're going to start seeing the orchestrated riots and uh, they'll be very strategic it'll be an attempt to intimidate and cause the, uh, the republican congress to uh, not support um trump's agenda you're going to have you have a lot of very sore losers millions and millions and millions of angry sore losers um, who are going to do everything they can to disrupt american society and so you're going to you're looking at a lot of violence on a lot of issues that are that are going to be coming up. And uh, these bureaucracies are not going to go away without a major fight <laughs> there. You know, this is a, you're talking about people who could go to prison for all of the misuses and abuses of power at the IRS over the last eight years. Um, they are not going to go quietly into the night. I got news for you. This, if you think that the. If you think that the election was a rough ride, wait till you see the governance. It's going to be very, very difficult, even for somebody as dynamic as Trump, to get through a lot of the uh, things that put him into the office. But it is still a big victory, and it is a very significant um, a break. Uh, and it's it, we really did need to stop the uh, movement toward oppression. They were right on the cusp of eliminating the First Amendment forever. Um, very, very close. I don't think most people realize how close, free, you know, the, the political class was going to reverse, uh, you, you know, Citizens United, and they would have been able to regulate everybody's speech once they had done that. So we were, the country just went through a near-death experience, quite frankly. I, I really believe that. I think that we were firmly on the path to di dictatorship. And now um, they're going to... Um, they're going to uh, wreck things from below. They're going to, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me a little of the Sandinistas. They were the communists who were running Nicaragua in the 80s, and or they were, and uh, the, uh, Reagan supported the uh, the uh, resistance movement, and then eventually it led to elections where uh, they uh, they gave up power because Jimmy Carter put them on the spot and. And then they, and then they uh, basically uh, took the country back eventually by just uh, uh, creating, you know, kidnappings, riots, violence on a systematic, large national scale for that tiny country. But I believe that's going to be what the left is going to resort to here. 
So, and uh, yeah, I mentioned I mentioned the uh, the burning of cars and uh, the, uh, the the uh, the the hate speech, and really that's just spontaneous. But I believe it's going to be large, and I think it's going to be very very organized. And sure. uh, in addition to that, Chris, um, you're going to have a situation where members of Congress will be taking their cues from the nasty stuff that's happening in the streets. So you're going to have. Uh, a, a Republican cabal, a cabal of insiders who are going to sabotage uh, everything moving forward in Congress. So that's going to be very, um, you know, Trump could easily get bogged down in all that. Uh, he, you know, he's certainly a very uh, formidable individual, but there's a whole lot of Republican turncoats. Uh, I saw a column by George Will, and George Will basically said this is a triumph of white nationalism. Uh, you know, which is a, just a massive insult to the people who, the ordinary people who supported Donald Trump. It's so not fair to them. Um, you know, George Will should know better that the racists tend to be. Uh, it ain't the white folks that are causing the, the racism. It's, uh, the, the reverse racism is really the actual issue. And um, um, and a lot of I I just you know so George Will and a lot of others uh, are are going to do everything they can. Remember, this is a very big setback for the Bush family, who uh, basically the Republican Party was very, very good to them. And when the moment came, they they were pro-Hillary Republicans. And there are a lot of pro-Hillary Republicans in the Republican establishment who did everything they could to prevent Trump from winning. Even though it was clear to everybody that he had touched a nerve with the uh, with the millions of people in the primary process, that he had touched a nerve, and they were all in denial about it. And so now, the, uh, they have made the, the, they tried to lead the Republican Party, and in the end, most Republicans voted for Trump. They came home to the Republican Party. They realized that Trump had won fair and square. It might have been a nasty fight, but he still won fair and square. So. I think right. we're looking at that situation now. So yeah, and I mean, you you even uh, talked uh, earlier in um, in an article you wrote about how you know, the GOP sabotaging Trump and um, you know the, the the Brexit level backlash, as, as you called it. Um, do you do you see that 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 changing for the majority of GOP? leaders now going to get behind Trump or do you think there'll still be some uh, collusion for those who uh, who supported Clinton? Uh, the communists have a famous strategy called uh, uh, pressure from above and pressure from below. So yes, I think there are a lot of Republican collaborators who uh, are big government statists um, you got to remember, I, and one of the predictions I made, I said, uh, I wanna, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, early in 2016, I did a lead story in Independent Living, you know, 2000, and the title of it was called 2016, the year of white riot, question mark. And of course, this riot happened in the ballot box. You know, it wasn't burning cars, but the public threw a grenade down the aisle. Um, but they did it through the ballot box, which is what the founders intended. But I, I made like five different points. I, I pointed out that uh, during the, the 1980 election with Carter and Reagan, Reagan was considered a B actor, failed B actor, which he was. And, uh, you know, he, he, he was getting the keys to the White House and the nuclear codes. And we were in a, you know, in a nuclear standoff, a very dangerous nuclear standoff with the Soviet Union, and you put this ex-69 year old was the oldest person elected president at that time, and the public uh, made a very big gamble on Reagan. It turned out wonderful. He turned out to be a terrific president, and uh, but but at the time, see everybody remembers Reagan, uh, you know, uh, the polished Reagan that that uh, did so well in the White House. But before all that, he had taken on the party. Uh, he had. Uh, uh, wrested the party control from the from the big government liberal republicans the turncoats and their and uh, now the public has repudiated the liberal republicans and they're going to i predict um you know that the crowds are going to get big in the street millions of people millions in the street um and i think it's going to make the 1960s look like nothing and i think you're going to see a lot of sabotage uh and a lot of mayhem they're going to do everything they can but 
I think what's interesting about the the Trump victory is that you know the I, I said this in my memo. It was a private memo I sent to a select group of our readers and a few weeks before the election, and I just said, "Here's five reasons Trump could win," and that was a big deal. You know that 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 uh, uh, despite Trump's flaws as a rookie candidate and his combative nature, uh, when when provoked, uh, basically the Republicans were. The Republicans were pushing from behind the scenes to to uh, see to it that he lost because they were they would rather have Hillary, which tells you a lot about the party and the kind of people that that we're up against. And that George Will thing is really distressing and concerning uh, as well, you know, because that's really how they feel. They're still mad at the public. They're mad at the public. But they're the left are going to regroup very quickly. Right. And, uh, yeah, I want to ask you this just on a personal level because um, I mean this was months and months ago I think maybe February or March you you told me and we might even have a video of it um, you you said that that Trump uh, was going to win and uh, I I disagreed with you and so how did how did you know um, what what made you like what did you see that made you say that uh, you know back way back in uh, February or March well I what I was telling people, Chris, was all the polling says that Trump can't win. And there were, you know, Larry Sabato and some of these other uh, guys that are, you know, you know, they, they work on the polls all the time. And, you know, it's a little intimidating to say that the polls are wrong. And, uh, you know, but I saw other signs like uh, this business with the NFL, the NFL, because, yeah, it is your right as a player if you want to express your disrespect for the flag and uh, the national anthem. I suppose it's within your rights, but the NFL NFL ratings have been tanking since that. And that was a sign to me that, um, you know, that Pete, that, that, that white, many white voters had reached a, a limit on they, because they were, I think they were weary of being, um, trapped in this narrative of President Obama's that white people are the cause of all the world's problems. And in fact, I think that, you know, uh, you, that's been a steady narrative. And I, that's another thing about Trump uh, that's different about him. Trump understands narratives. Narratives are stories. You have villains in a story and you can explain a story and the left are so good at that and we stink at it. You know, we might talk, we might have a policy paper or something, but we don't tell a story. Hillary knew how to tell a story. It's why she, despite her many flaws, she got, I mean, she still won. The, I think she won the popular vote. Uh, I'm not, I'd like to see the real numbers on that. But she came close to either she did win the popular vote or, you know, so she, that's a big number of people. She got a few more people voting for her. It was the electoral college intricacies that, that put Trump in power. So. You know, you gotta you gotta look at this stuff and go. Uh, you 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 know, you've got a left that that is far more powerful than at any time in the history of our country. I mean, there's just a whole lot of people, and they got they have a good command of the issues. Um, they they're uh, they Trump will now be the big villain, and they will organize around that. And the rallies, uh, the, uh, they will put people in the streets in numbers that are going to shock. Um, everybody in the political world and it will be designed to intimidate members of Congress into, uh, into blunting the, the Trump agenda, uh, to the extent that it's a popular agenda with conservatives and, uh, you, and you've got members of Congress who are itching for an excuse to, uh, to discredit Trump because their very credibility rests on Trump being discredited. That's the key, you know, um, they're pro-Hillary Republicans. They got busted by the voters. The voters shut them down. But the voters are going to, uh, you know, the voters might follow Trump for a little while, but eventually Trump will be alone. Eventually the public will turn its back because that's the nature of a republic-oriented people where basically you delegate, you know, you make the decision and then you delegate the important day-to-day uh, -day stuff to the people and you don't pay attention and, and to it again until it hits a critical mass. And I do see massive sabotage. I see massive problems uh, coming through. And then, you know, then there's, then there's President Obama. You know, I, I think to that reader's question, 
what about President Obama? What's he going to do? Well, this is a very dangerous period for Obama, because what Obama might or might not do. I think he has made it clear he's going to leave office in time, but we could be in a war very quickly. Uh, this is a primo time for China, you know, to take for other countries to take a to 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 make some kind of a power grab uh, or or perhaps even attack us while Obama is still president. And uh, and then and then we're off to the races. So, right, uh, right. you know, and, it's like it's really, uh, you know, uh, it, it, you know, I can't it, it's going to be a while before Trump can get in there and it's going to be a while before he can really, you know, make a big difference, Chris. So the, the left are going to be preparing and you can expect them, you know, in the 1960s, um, people, the anti-war protesters, uh, the White House actually had to be protected by uh, tour buses. There were so many people uh, surrounding the White House. And I think you're going to see that kind of, you're going to see something that exceeds the 1960s all over again. It may not, it, it may not reach the proportions of the Civil War, but um, I think it's going to be more than the 1960s. Wow. So a lot more violence and uh, really their target will be members of Congress and the media. So they will distract Trump from his agenda as he has declared it to be to the American people. So I think that'll be the big thing. They'll cause so much turmoil that the media will pay attention to those people all the time. And Trump will be, you know, Trump will have to work very hard. He'll have to be extraordinarily skilled to overcome all that. So, yeah. I mean, Reagan had the freeze movement and he prevailed over them over time. But, but the left was nowhere near as, as well organized and well funded and, uh, nor are they, were they as ruthless as they are now. Now, at the at this point in history, the left is very, very dangerous. Yeah, and earlier you were referring, we had a, a question come in from a, a reader about is there anything to worry about uh, in, until Trump uh, takes office and just uh, let people know that's what you were referring to there. I wanted, um, looking back over um, our notes and you... You talked about the the year of the uh, how'd you put it the the, the white the white, white riot. riot yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well yeah that's right yeah yeah, yeah. that's um in in that it was uh, a a quiet riot <laughs> it's a uh, riot in the form of riot I mean it it was a, a rebellion in the form of putting Trump in power mm -hmm. uh, that's right and you know people have compared it to 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 Brexit, and you were on uh, Wayne Allen Root's uh, radio show talking about that. He he has he came up with a, a different name, Trexit. Uh, Trexit, yeah, that's right. Yeah. They, by the way, Wayne Allen Root rocks. I was on his I was on his radio yeah. show in Vegas uh, about a month ago, and damn, that guy's good. He is he uh, he was a lot spot of on. He was there seventeen months at the beginning. I think uh, you set up an interview for me to talk to him on Friday. So we're gonna that's right. We're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a little conversation with Wayne Allen Root, who uh, he's written a number of books. One of them is Relentless, and he wrote another one with a very uh, aggressive title called Angry White Male, which by the way doesn't have a racist word in it, but it is a pretty pretty provocative title, and. Uh, he, uh, you know, and and the guy is like, uh, the guy's like this happy warrior, and he, uh, and he, but he had the he had astonishing foresight. So, literally, I came home after being on Wayne's radio show a month ago and wrote this thing out. I, I said, uh, I think that the polls are wrong, and I think that that uh, that they're missing something really big. That and the NFL thing is something I talked with Wayne about because that was a that was like an indicator to me that was not a poll, but it told me. It told me that, that people, that there was a, a white voter backlash against being portrayed as villains and the cause of so much of the world's problems. And, and that was, uh, and you know, when they, when they trotted out Al Sharpton, that's when you knew they were in trouble um, to, to try to prop up the, to try to pop up minority voter uh, turnout. Uh, because for every, every time you show, I mean, they kept that a pretty big secret of the Obama administration. Uh, Sharpton shows up, uh, you know, at, at the white house often hangs out with the president. So, and this guy, you know, he got at least six people killed, uh, in, uh, in, in riots he incited or he's credited with that. And I, you know, uh, so this, you know, and I think you're going to see a whole lot more of that. You're going to see, uh, uh, Trump is going to have to work very hard to, to, uh, uh, try to, try to talk to the African-American community, 
Um, and I think that, you know, it'll be interesting to see what their numbers looked like. But, you know, I, one of the things I predicted would be that was that uh, the, the emphasis on crooked Hillary would reduce uh, the incentive for people to go to the polls. And it turned out that Trump's big enthusiastic crowds really did matter in this case. People, yeah. you know, if you think about it this way, Chris, if you're waiting in line for four hours, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people waiting in line for four or five hours, sometimes in the cold to see this dude, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, those are voters. Those people are going to show up at the polls and they're going to tell their friends and they're going to, you know, and Hillary's got these little fake little, you know, they, they hide the fact that, that she had. And so Trump kept talking about that. And I think it caught on. I think, you know, Trump talks mm-hmm. a narrative and he, uh, and he, and he repeats the same lines over and over until it finally breaks through and to the point where the crowds are able to shout to his lines back to him. And that's what you got to do in politics. And plus this dogged pursuit of votes. He, he just he, he was like Harry Truman, you know, in, in 1948, Harry Truman defied all the odds and, and he was an incumbent, almost got taken out. And, you know, he did the train tour and he, you know, he, he whistled, he whistle stopped all over America and he just and uh, all everybody was wrong. Everybody was wrong about the polls. So right. Right. and I also the other thing was, I think that. Trump became so controversial inside people's families and circle of friends. They just didn't want to talk about what they were going to do when they were alone in the voting booth. And I think the voters just got mischievous and dropped and just lobbed that grenade down the aisle, the political grenade. Yeah, that, that's but what I've heard. Not, the left are going to be violent. They are not going to do – they're not going to express themselves. They're going to express themselves at the ballot box, but that isn't what you got to worry about. They they will distract mm. and distract and distract and if they could put a million people in the – see, they're going to play on Trump. I predict they'll play on Trump's bragging about his crowds. They're going to put a million people in the streets, and they will get massive turnout, and it will be very intimidating to members of Congress, and it will be used as a just you – know, and it, you know, it's not going to be pretty for you know, anybody that wants to get anything done. For, for you, are you um, – you know, now that we know the outcome, are you doing anything – uh, differently in terms of, um, you know, your own self-reliance, uh, your own system that you've set up, uh, now that we know who the president is versus if, if Hillary had, had won or, or are you changing any course of action for you personally? Well, Chris, that's a great question. You know, I think it really boils down to, um, people, it's very important to be more self-reliant in every possible way that you can be because relief from the political side is going to be very slow and very painful. Um, I think that because of the mandate that Trump has gotten, I think they probably will be successful at repealing some or all of Obamacare. That's a big deal. Um, I, I anticipate some success with that. Because if he does it, if he's going to call an emergency session and make it happen first thing, good thinking. And um, that's that's terrific. But, uh, you know, you're talking about the forces of globalism and tri- and people who are used to controlling trillions of dollars of other people's money. And you're talking about George Soros, who... And and all these other people who, uh, you know, they've got they've got a black hat operation. I mean, uh, they, they, you know, uh, the Trump headquarters had been attacked. One was firebombed a, a hundred miles north of me. And I think you're going to see that kind of political violence. I also think you're going to see some assassination. I think that member, before term, Trump's term is over, members of Congress will have to be protected by the Secret Service because I think that people are, you know, that some extremists are going to start assassinating members of Congress who, and I, I think we're there. I mean, you know, it's it's going to be really unpretty. And some people will be willing to martyr themselves to do that, even though mm-hmm. I can't find that, you know, that I can't, I, I'm just saying, I think that we're at that point where you're going to have that kind of uh, violence. I think you're going to see it directed against the families of people who who support Trump, I think you're going to see a very unpretty process. And then, of course, you've got you still have all the media, you know, they're, yeah, they're in shock right now and there's some humility they're displaying, but they got caught off guard. That isn't going to last long. Right. Yeah. I, I, and, a, yeah. and I do have a lot of suggestions coming up in future editions of Independent Living. 
And I'm so glad that that uh, you're offering uh, a lot of this information to Advanced Freedom Club members and others. And That's I had right. sent I had sent this particular memo to my inner circle members who. Uh, it's a different, it's a different, uh, uh, different kettle of fish. But uh, you know, sometimes I'll, I like to, I don't want to bore people with my take on politics. Generally speaking, um, I try to avoid that because it's, it's a, uh, uh, my politics. You know, the readers really need to learn how to stuff. There's so many people willing to put their uh, political opinions out there. But I like what Matt Drudge does. He doesn't really editorialize. He simply picks the stories that he thinks are important and people come to a site. That's how I feel about it. I'd rather tell, and, and in my case, I'd rather tell people, let's, let's see, but I say, who are you going to vote for, Lee? I'm like, I'm not, no, I'm not voting. I'm not going to, you know, I'm in South Carolina. Trump has got South Carolina. He doesn't need my vote. And I, I try to really educate people. I mean, everybody should vote. I'm just saying that what I'm getting to is, is that, uh, you can't rely on the political system for relief. You got to, you got to, and this is so important in what we do at Independent Living News, is help people with understanding these issues uh, on how to improve their, f- their privacy and their finances. I mean, part of freedom is is you got to come part of the way yourself. You can't just sit around and wait for p- relief from the political system. That's right, and I mean you. Um you you've talked before about how i mean what what self reliance really is is making a, a a broken system work for you and it's 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 uh it, it's broken no matter who is in office well yes and you know but i think you have to assume that i mean never give up hope you know it could be that that trump will be much more successful than people think but um, I'm just telling you that, that I think political assassination has arrived. I think there are people that are extreme enough that, that uh, uh, will be mar- are willing to martyr themselves, uh, meaning that, yeah, we'll catch them. But, you know, you, once people are willing to martyr themselves for political cause, and I think Trump is the kind of guy that will get the left so insane – And then you've got the powerful globalists. I mean, they've got to discredit Trump. They've got to take him out one way or the other. And that's what they're talking. I mean, people in the streets are talking assassination already. You know, it's it's uh, uh, so and I think that I think they will deploy millions of people into the streets in different cities all over the country. I think they're I think they're already started on that. Uh, And I think that's their instinct. And uh, and I think that members of Congress will be intimidated. And I think that members of Congress who have a lot to gain by Trump being discredited, uh, who are Republicans, are going to uh, respond to these uh, so-called pressures, and they'll treat it like it's something spontaneous when, in fact, it's orchestrated. And we saw, you know, Project Veritas, um, they have really done, they did a lot to show the voters uh, how how Hillary and her team were orchestrating violence at riots, and Hillary still won the popular vote. OK, that's at least if she didn't win it, she came awfully close to beating Trump in the popular vote, even though even though, you know, she was completely exposed for the thuggish attacks on on, uh, you know, Trump headquarters and inciting violence at riots and at violence at uh, rallies and so forth. And. And it blew up in their face. But, you know, the moments that the, the American public pays attention are very, very rare. So the public is done with this. They're not going to pay a whole lot more attention at this point. They're going back to their lives. They, they may follow some of Trump's initiatives on the Hill, but in the end, um, the public is going to turn its back on this issue. This, this chapter is closed. The election is done. And they're going to assume that it's going to get done. Yeah. And so in a manner of speaking, Trump will be somewhat on his own. Hmm. And it's see Reagan used to communicate with the public. I mean, Trump will continue to do that, but, uh, and it's been effective. He'll be effective at it to a degree. But I think that the news cycles are going to be dominated by other by others. They're going to they're going to steal his news cycles, and they're going to intimidate members of Congress. And I think they're going to do a lot of ugly, extreme things on a big scale, yeah. on a really, really big scale. Because again, I think that sticks in their craw that that uh, Trump was drawing such huge crowds, and Hillary didn't. And I think they're going to try to turn that back around on Trump. So, uh, and, and, and so, you know, I anticipate and I counsel everybody to anticipate major social upheaval that will exceed the 1960s. I don't believe it'll get to civil war, as I said, levels, but 
actually there is a, I think there is a bill in uh, California to secede from the union, which would be kind of okay with me if they did that. But uh, <laughs> you know, I like California's pretty. It's a very pretty state. It is pretty. Uh, yeah, it really is. Um, but uh, you know, the, the, it's uh, no. This is just getting started. The governing is the hard part. Believe it or not, it's not going to be. Uh, you know, the the election. Everybody thinks the election was a was a tiresome uh, affair, but the governing is is it's nothing compared to the governing issues. Hmm. Well, is um, is there anything else that that we we didn't cover or that we need to cover that we didn't? No, I think we got it. I think we got this down for a little while. Um, you know, you're always welcome to call me. Yeah. About anything, you know, but I think this uh, this uh, election thing is really important and uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to, I think a lot of people are uh, kind of sitting back and say, what the hell happened? You know, and, and, uh, I was really happy, but, you know, Wayne Allen Root is the one who got me to make that prediction. I was like talking to him and, and, uh, and I said, I said, you know what? And we were talking about the NFL and all that. And, and, uh, and, and he had a, you know, so let's just say that my memo was inspired by him and I'm glad I wrote right. it now. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So Absolutely. I'm very, very happy about that and uh, glad to talk about the thinking here. And I do, you know, with my with my inner circle, I'll, I'll give them a heads up on, in private matters. But, you know, in the in the Advanced Freedom Club, uh, eventually that stuff filters over to them. And, you know, we try to I try to at least explain what's what I'm my my private thinking and private planning uh, as we go forward. So. Right. Yeah. And I appreciate your uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to catch up a little bit about the election it's kind of fun to do anyway it is yeah you know? it's, well, we uh, got to get back to the self-reliance work as boring as that can be that's right uh, that's our lot in life but that hey uh you know pre- <laughs> preparing for something you hope you never have to use but uh, you know you don't have to live in a bunker chris you could there's so many smart things you can do so damn mm-hmm. many of smart things that can be done by an individual that's right uh, who, who's motivated and, and believes and cares in what they're doing so uh you know Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me have a chance to talk to your uh, group. Absolutely. Well, good to catch up as always. And we'll those talk. discounts you get them is are awesome. By yeah. the way, <laughs> yeah. Well, there, there's a That's ton terrific. of them. That is terrific. Good for you to do that, Chris. You got some wonderful, uh, wonderful things going on with that, and uh, you should be proud of yourself for uh, making all this available to people because it's it it makes the membership free, and yeah. it's so important to us to reach a wider audience. And uh, you know, and it, we've been. It does cost money to do that, but you figured out an ingenious way to pay for it uh, that, that benefits right. everybody. And that's really the nature of uh, freedom and capitalism and free enterprise in innovation. And you, uh, you've done a great job with it. I yeah. want to thank you for that. Uh, thanks. And that's it. If you want to check it out, it's at advancedfreedomclub.com. And uh, Lee, we'll catch up soon. Good to talk to you. Take care, Chris.